back. If you are new around here, then hi, it is nice to meet you. And if you're returning, then thank you very fucking much for coming back. Always love to say that to you because, you know, not that many people are gonna sit and watch a 30 odd year old rambly Scottish woman talk about beauty and skincare and all that kind of stuff. If you haven't been here before, then my name is Alana and as I said, I am a lady in her 30s living in Scotland who loves a little bit of beauty, skincare, travel vlogging, all that basic lifestyle bullshit but with a liberal sprinkling of swearing and sarcasm on the top. This video is gonna be this look that I have here. Very, very simple, do not worry, it's not gonna to be too intricate but it is using all the kind of new stuff that has came into my collection over the last few months. Some ultimately just arrived on the doorstep today, like this from Rare Beauty, so I have put some of that stuff on my face, and some are things that sneaked in at the tail end of last year, but I've never actually shared here on the channel. So grab yourself a tea, a coffee, a cuppa, whatever the fuck you like, a wine, a whiskey, feeling fine, do whatever you want, I don't give a fuck. And that is your word of warning that I do like the odd sweary words as well. Please feel free to skedaddle if that is not your cup of tea. But if it does sound like the kind of thing you're into and you like to listen to a rambly mad Scottish woman talking about beauty and lifestyle bullshit with the odd bit of pregnancy thrown in as well now, then there's a subscription button down in the corner there if you fancy becoming a subscriber, that would be lovely. Otherwise, let's just get into this video. All right, we're gonna do things a tiny bit backwards today, but that's because it's currently three o'clock in the afternoon and we have some lovely sunshine. It's actually very sunny today. Nice, cold, fresh winter's day, but there's a lot of sunshine. So I'm gonna start with base and face first because I am gonna use my wilderness palette to create the eye look in this, but it's not gonna be super duper fancy, intricate or anything like that. It's gonna be pretty basic because a lot of the products that I wanna try are kind of facey, basey type of products. So I thought why not start with the face rather than the eyes today. Just before I do start, I wanna mention something because I talked about this, was it Black Friday? Can't remember. Sorry, my cat is now climbing behind me and doesn't really know what to do herself. <laughs> Pebbles, what is it? Like, see now, oh, these two, they just won't leave me be. I think they know. They must know that there's a little bear grown in this stomach somehow or other. I don't know how, but the two of them, they just do not leave my side. Oh, I say that, Molly's in the living room, sleeping as she does all day. Now, all of these products, I don't think I've shown them here on the channel in use, uh, but some of them I've definitely spoke about on the channel before. And some of them I have been using routinely since even the end of last year. So, you know, not everything is a first impressions here. Some of it is things that I've tried and tried different ways of doing it and stuff and got to love them. And other things I've tried and not loved them. This being one of them. So this is the Revlon Photo Ready Rose Glow Hydrating Plus Illuminating Primer. This is in the Rose Quartz. I don't think it matters what kind of colour it is because it doesn't make any really big difference. Uh, I've used about here on it, I don't know if you can see that. The reason I'm not using this as a primer today but I want to speak about it is because, as I've said, I hate when people mention things and never see them again. But the reason I'm using it as a primer is because I have used my Fenty Skin Hydra Visor, which is an SPF of 30 as my base today. This went on about an hour ago, I would say, so it's nicely sunk into the skin now. But I don't wanna then put this primer on top to intricate and fuck it up, basically, if I'm gonna use my Venti Beauty foundation on the top. I wanna see how these two play together on their own because they're from the same company, rather than throw this one into the mix. But just to give you the heads up, <laughs> Um, this I have not been enjoying. I don't like it. It's something I've tried and I've put on, even if I put it on the back of my hand just to remind myself here just now, it gets, it's got like these little bursting bubbles which I presume are serum or something in it. And also it's supposed to be like an illuminating primer so you would think it would leave some sort of sheen on the skin like it would have some sort of mica or shimmer or something in it. But it's not, it's just like a wet, watery liquid that leaves nothing once you've actually rubbed it in. There's no kind of, in the bottle, it looks like there's a nice shimmer or a glow to it or something. There's nothing like that when you put it on your skin. As for it being hydrating, I don't think it adds anything to my skincare wasn't already doing. So as a bit of a kind of overview, so far I've not been enjoying this. I will continue to use it, I'll see how I get on with it. 
but I'm not that fussed and I wouldn't recommend it so far. Now, as I said, I do already have the Hydra Visor on from Fenty Skin. Um, this is maybe the third or fourth time that I've tried it within this week. Uh, I think my videos will be going up kind of back to back, hopefully. So if you didn't see me speaking about this when I picked this up, I'm going to link that video up in the corner here. So to give you a little idea of a first impression of this, it's difficult at the moment. Because I'm pregnant at the moment, I find I am oilier than I normally would be. But I've found my Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid uh, Watery Sun Gel, I've used throughout and I don't feel like it's made it more oily or less, it still does the same thing. I find this one is a little heavier, it's a little thicker, it feels like you're putting on a sunscreen almost. Um, and I think for this time of year when it's winter and I do normally have drier skin, that might be really effective. But I feel like if I was to use this in the summer, I might feel it's a little greasy. Uh, I do think it leaves a little bit of a cast as well, I have to say that. Um, I feel like when I've seen this when it first came out, people were saying, considering it was a brand that was inclusive of all skin colours, maybe they should have thought about that and put more thought into the chemical side of the sunscreen than the physical side. Um, certainly, I am not an expert to speak about anything, like I'm not a scientist, I am not a cosmetic cosmetologist or anything like that. But I do think it leaves a little bit of a cast, very minimal, and on my skin, I don't feel like it looks like any different at the moment, now that it's sunk in, but just so you know. I'm now going to take the Fenty Beauty and this is the Pro Filter Hydrating Primer. It has a little pump on it. And what I've been doing is kind of taking two pumps-ish. Um, I'm going to also mention here that all of the brushes I'm going to be using today are Lara Fae. Uh, basically because they actually sent me another collection, again that'll be in that video, uh, of the face brushes in the blue and gold colourway. So I thought, well why not just use solely Lara Fay brushes and be able to talk about the brushes as I go through this. So this is the Lara Fae F04. What I like to do is kind of work the product into the brush rather than put it straight on my face. That's the way I would normally do it. It's the same way with concealer and stuff. I would kind of work it into the brush the majority of the time. And I find for this foundation, for me, that works really well because I find this is a little bit more of a full coverage kind of foundation for me. You might see as well, I'm hoping, I'm going to do like one side of my face, the classic YouTube type thing. But I'm hoping you'll see as well, in the areas where I'm quite red and I'm covering it up with this foundation, it cancels that red out really nicely. And I'd mentioned that I feel like this does oxidise ever so slightly, but almost in a good way. I feel like it actually gets rid of some of the redness that I don't want. And I am very rosy cheeked and I don't mind that. But around about the nose and things, you don't necessarily always want to be looking like Rudolph. And I find it goes on really smoothly and I do a really thin layer, just those two pumps, I don't take any more. That's one side of my face pretty much done. I might dip back in just to put a little more coverage up here. But as you know, I'm not a full coverage type of lady. So if you're watching this thinking, that doesn't look very impressive. Uh, my apologies, I'm just not a full coverage kind of girl. I much prefer a tinted moisturiser or using a bit of concealer to shade where I need it to be. But I'm going to zoom you in and let you see what that looks like sitting on top of my skin and show you the side without as well. Oh, I maybe zoomed you in a little too far there, sorry. Okay, so I think there is a marked difference. You can see like my natural freckles, my kind of redness, my spots, anything like that on this side. There's like a little um, pigmentation blemish. You can see all that on this side of my face, that's fine. This is the side with the Fenty on it. And I do feel it really evens it out. It is a little bit more, as I say, yellow than my natural skin tone. I am naturally very pink. But I think it does a really good job of cancelling out these areas where I am more red, like here, on this side. And that is it on this side. I think it looks really nice. Um, I'm just going to take my brush and just kind of lightly dust across these areas here. But that's me, I kind of just press and lightly swipe. I'm not going heavy with my brush. I am like just lightly kissing the face. You don't need to go super duper heavy here. And there we go, that is the other side done as well now. You still can see some of my skin peeking through here. It's not like you totally cover everything up. If you wanted, you could go in with a heavier concealer and do that. But what I found is I've really not felt the need to because it's been slightly heavier coverage than what I'm used to. Sometimes I'll just leave it at that and not bother with concealer. I might put a little bit in here, 
but not in the other areas of my face where I would normally. So now that I've zoomed you out, I feel I look a bit ghostly and a little pale, but I can assure you that is not, that's maybe just because of the, the light and things like that. Um, the light has already started to disappear, so I have turned my brightness up ever so slightly on my light. But what I will say as well about this foundation is that I think it wears really, really well. I haven't found that this, like, you know, at the moment it's kind of full coverage. I feel at the moment I look a little, little cakey, but that's because I'm not a heavy coverage kind of girl. Other people would look at this video and be like, no, you don't, you look, you're fine, don't worry. But I do feel like it's a little heavy. But what I do find about this, because it's maybe the hydrating version, then the oils and all that kind of stuff start showing through and it looks a lot more like a natural skin. Once by the time I've done the rest of my makeup, I'm very much happy with this foundation. So this has been a winner. Well done, Fenty, because as we know, if you've been here for any length of time, I was not impressed with Fenty whatsoever. I was truly starting to think, I don't know if I will ever like a Fenty product. And then this one, just came out of nowhere and I kind of really love it. So I'm going to go in now and put some bronzer on, but we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna use some Danessa, and this is Toasted Almond, the Vision Flush and Toasted Almond, which I normally would use in the summer, but I'm gonna use it today just because, let's change it up a little bit from a normal bronzer. And I've been speaking about the Physician Formula Butter Bronzer for so long. So this is definitely like a liquid product. You can use it on your eyes, on your cheeks, on your lips, anything like that. So I'm gonna take it today and use it to bronze the face a little bit. And I'm gonna take this brush here from Lara Faye. This is our F10. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I have been sent these products. Uh, certainly the blue handled face brushes, they are ones that I've received in PR, but I have bought with my own money before as well. So I'm just taking that Vision Flush and taking it into the places where I want it to look like I've got a little bit of sculpting, a little bit more of a cheekbone, a little bit less of a, a double chin, etc. But what I love about the Vision Flushes is they are really, really easy to do that with. You don't have to worry about kind of going in too heavy with it. I always put it on the back of my hand first and then dip into it as well. I don't just go straight in with it on my face because, I mean, I have done that before as well, but I find sometimes that's just a little bit too dark on me because as you can see, I'm pale as a ghost, but I really like the tone of this on my face. I think it's really nice. Um, so I'm just gonna do the same on the other side and sculpt round about the other parameters of my face. And I think that is probably more than enough, but you can just see how that's brought a little bit of shape back to my face. I'm not as flat and matte anymore, not just kind of, one color um, and I do, I think that that foundation oxidizes a little bit as well. So once that changes color, it kind of helps too. I feel like I've got a big red patch here now. Um, I don't know why, but um, I'm not taking it any lower down because who cares? Nobody's seen that part of me. Um, <laughs> but I'm just gonna take it there. That was the Danessa Myrix Vision Flush. I think that works really well. I normally use it in the summer, but I thought, why not? Fuck it, let's try it today. And actually I thought this was a really useful brush to do that with. It's kind of like a round domed brush, so it's not flat at all, like it's shaped in a round manner as well. The ferrule is totally round rather than being compressed and compact or anything like that. Uh, a bit like, obviously this one here, this is like a powder brush. This is from the Pink Collection and that is the F13. And you can see there that the ferrule is like a flat one. Can you, can you see there? I don't know, it's like flat and that's its side on there. So it's more compressed, it's like pinched here. That one is not like that. It's completely circular all the way around. But I enjoyed that. I thought that was really nice. I think that would be really nice for cream blush as well. Maybe a little too dense on the top, but we're gonna go into something else. So as I said, I had other products that I wanted to play with today. This one has just arrived. Uh, I would have included this in my last video, but it hadn't arrived when I filmed that yesterday, annoyingly. Um, so I picked up some stuff from Rare Beauty, which I have wanted to try for so, so long, but we've not had it in the UK. And now it has came to Space NK. And me trying to work out how to open that box there was way worse than it should have been. Jesus, I could hardly get into that box there. First of all, I've got a few samples. Eye Brightening De Puffing Contour Cream from Sunday Riley. And I did get this actually, which is a sample from Rare Beauty as well, which if I'd known, I potentially would have used one of these. But I wanted to show you that Fenty foundation anyway. So this is their Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation in 48 shades. 
and I've got a selection of five here plus a primer as well so I will try that at some point so what I picked up was one of the sets with lots of minis in it because I thought again love a mini love trying out lots of different things and this comes with the dewy liquid blush the liquid luminizer matte lip cream and universal volumizing mascara I was going to try a different mascara but we'll see when we get there and then I picked up as well their with gratitude dewy lip balm and I got the color empathy and I also picked up the always an optimist illuminating primer I think this was a freebie like if you spent so much you got a miniature size of this I don't think I paid for this um, it's like a mini size of the illuminating primer so again that is something I will use in the future and get back to you on because I already have kind of put my base on today and then I got a full size of the Stay Vulnerable Melting Blush and this is in Nearly Rose so first of all I have to say I think the packaging on this is really really cute really really nice I love it um, it's millennial pink you know I'm one of those basic bitches uh, this is the blush here as I said I got Nearly Rose which actually is a lot more pink than I expected it to be we shall see what it's like when it goes on the cheeks but I really I think the packaging is really super cute it's like it's almost like a wee Polly Pocket do you remember Polly Pockets that's what it's like the lip balm and empathy I'm just gonna pop this on just now while I'm doing the rest of my makeup I did I need a lip balm as I've said before probably not I've got loads of lip balms but I really liked I, I did I was a bit of a sucker for the packaging on this I think it's really nice it's not a magnet I know I've seen loads of people this isn't the first time you'll have seen Rare Beauty especially if you're watching from across the pond because you guys got it so much earlier than us um, so I feel like this has already been commented on the fact that it's not magnetic it's like a soft close and I think it's kind of sturdy but that could come off in your handbag if you were taken out somewhere uh, and as I said I got the colour Empathy I will swatch it on the back of my hand here oh it's very soft that is it there and it is it's just like a nice kind of dusty rose colour and I'm just going to pop that on. Actually, in real life, that is borderline mauve. Like a little bit more mauve than it is pinky or plummy. But I don't dislike it. Feels really good. It's very buttery. Like um, the Glossy Ultra Lips, I feel maybe a little bit more sticky than this. They're still like a balm. But this is like a proper like lip balm if you were using something that's like a chapstick type situation it's nicer than a chapstick but it's very waxy it's very oily it doesn't feel like there's any kind of pull on your lips at all but I really I do like that and empathy that is the colour that I've got on I think that's lovely so for the face products I'm going to put on some of the minis so I believe this is a mini on the blush and this is Joy which is this kind of peachy colour which I think is really really nice I'm going to put joy on one side and then i might put the other blush on the other side just to have a wee idea i could put it straight on but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it on the back of the hand because as you know i like to dip into things on the back of my hand instead and that is it there i don't know if you're going to see uh, this is the highlighter that is in mesmerize it's like a liquid highlighter that is um almost rosy golden can you see that there but it, it is it's like almost got like a another shift it it's not just like a straight up silvery pink it's got warmth to it which i'm quite excited about because i don't like when things are too silver as i've said before uh, and then this here is a mini of the lip product what do you call that again the matte lip cream um this is really k beauty inspired i would say it's that kind of soft velvet looking type of lip um and i'm gonna just a little bit on the back of my hand there as well as you can see that is a really true kind of red color as well so let's start messing about with these because I'm not sure when I'm going to start and what I'm going to do now for the kind of liquid blush I'm going to go in with this brush it is the f15 from Lara Fay it's very well packed uh, face brush and it's quite big so I feel like that's going to deposit quite a lot of color quite quickly so I'm gonna just gently dab the brush in on the back of my hand there and then softly whoo as you can probably see start placing that blush that is really pigmented but 
in a good way. I don't think that's a bad thing. I've just flipped the brush around and used the other side now. I don't think that is a bad thing. I know for some people, like, they don't really like their blush to be too ahead of themselves too quickly. But actually, I quite like that. And that is a beautiful apricot kind of orangey coral colour. I think that is so nice. I'm just taking the excess off on the back of my hand there. Or on the inside of my hand there, I should say. And I'm just going to start blending that right up and kind of round here. Because I don't want it to be too clown-like. But the colour, oh, that is very pretty can you see that there i really hope i'm sorry the light will be shit um that's beautiful oh that's so nice um and then i'm gonna go in on the other side with the other blush which is the melting blush in nearly rose and i'm gonna take this from lara Fay again and this is from the blue collection and this is their fo9 which is very similar in shape to the pink one i've just used as you can see but a little bigger and this one has like a this one here is like round again it's like more beveled that way like an oval shape that's probably the best way to explain it this one is like flat really flat i'm hoping you can see that there like it's been pinched in at the side and it's definitely more densely packed so i'm going to use that with this so I'm, I'm dipping in here and it doesn't look like there's loads of color in this brush but i am wary that it might actually be very pigmented so i'm just going to softly start placing that here i think these style of brushes this one certainly i've used before for cream blushes this one as well is very very good for this kind of thing i think people would use it for foundations as well but personally for me i quite like a cream blush with this style of a brush so that is the pink on that side i feel not quite as pigmented but i think that's because of the style of blush it is it's like a cream blush instead so i can go back in and build that up so if you are somebody who's a bit wary of blush and doesn't like the blush getting away from them, this would probably be a better option than the liquid blush for yourself. But just so you know, I feel like I've got an orange face and a pink face now. I feel like this is a really pretty, pretty colour for Valentine's Day. They both are, but this pink is really, really very sweet. Um, it is not a baby pink though, like Barbie it's definitely got that bit more kind of warmth to it. It's not electric pink. It's a warmer pink than that. It's not got too much blue in it, which I really like. Personally, I think I prefer the orange, but I like orange blushes. Now, I'm just going to leave the blush there at the moment and go in and put in a little bit of eyeshadow on the eye because sometimes once you've got something on your eye, you might need to add, change things up a little bit with regards to your blush. So, what I am going to use, first of all is this from nabla this is their regeneration concealer and i have the shade light ivory this is the one that has the stupid it's a stupid applicator i hate this kind of applicator i am just gonna twist it up so some comes out you can see there and i'll put it on the back of my hand and again work with the brush i just hate this kind of an applicator um and i have to say this is not something that's like a first impressions on this video i have been using this for a little while now and i find that it's okay but as an under eye concealer it's a little heavy for me just ever so slightly so what i have been using it for instead has been to kind of prime my eyelids instead of using it for an actual under eye concealer but we'll use it for both today and i just brought you in a little closer so you can really see this side now is quite pink and this side is quite orangey apricot I I really like this light almost matches my nails i really like this color and this is the pink side i will blend that out a little bit more i just wanted to get a feel for the blushes and i'm just gonna go in as i said really really basic quite simple i'm going in with the lightest shade in this palette it's like a kind of cream color i'm just dusting that across the eyes because as i said this is not going to be a super duper technical look it's more of a kind of soft and let's get me out the door type of look and this is the lara Fay e07 one of my favorites I, I own like four of these these are my best uh, and then i'm gonna go in with this one here which is the blue eye collection it's the e14 it's a little um it's more tapered than the e07 i feel it's just a little smaller a little um more compact so i'm gonna go in with that one and i'm gonna take earth which is the kind of more brown shade in the palette and i'm just gonna touch that in here because it is quite a deep dark brown 
and I kind of just want a suggestion of colour rather than an actual look, a brown look. There we go, that's just brought a bit of softness back to the eye. I am going to go in with Fossil, which is a really nice kind of golden, but a warm gold again, not something that's too silvery shade. And I'm going to go in with this one here, which is the E15, which is more like a packing brush. Uh, I'm not going to pack on loads and loads of shimmer, don't worry. Um, just bring it across the lids a little so that there's like a little bit of a, a sheen to the top of my lids, but again, not super duper sparkly. I feel like if you were using this brush with a matte colour, it would really pack it on, but with a shim shimmery shade like this, again, you can kind of blow out the shimmer. Uh, if you wanted, you could spray it with something wet or whatever, and then you could actually go in and make it look really a lot more frosty if you wanted, but that's not what I'm going for today. And then I'm going to go in with the E12, which I feel like is a smaller version of the E14 there. And I'm just going to go in to that earth colour again, and I'm going to just build up that colour right outside on the outer corner there. I feel like the light has now became really yellow, but the sky outside has went, you know that way in a thunderstorm when the sky goes that really yellowy colour as if it's going to thunder and lightning? That's just what's happened, so I'm starting to wonder. There we go, I've just built up a little bit more of that brown shade kind of across the lash line there. I am very tempted to try one of the red colours, but then I don't want to throw off what's going on in my skin, so I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm just going to take this one here, which is the E11, which is like a little pencil brush, and follow that underneath as well. Nothing too fancy, just a little bit of something there to frame my eye. Alright, so I'm hoping you can see there, it's just a little hint of something. I couldn't help myself, I have put a tiny little bit of red from the palette. Underneath, uh, I used Heat, which is this kind of frosty red shade here. Just under here, uh, I'm gonna go in and put a little bit of the fossil shade, which is the gold that I've got on the top of the lid, just in the inner corner here. And I'm gonna take the same brush, I've cleaned it off, but the E11, which is the kind of pencil style brush, just to bring that in there and bring a little bit of light. So I'm just going to use the rest of the concealer that I do have in the back of my hand and a clean E07 and I'm just going to go back in and as I say I usually work it into the brush I don't just go straight on with concealer sometimes I do but a lot of the time I will work it into the back of my brush first and I'm just going to hint that under this area here the reason I haven't been overly thrilled with this as kind of under eye concealer is I have found it is just a little heavy. It's making me a little crepey under here. That might just be because I'm dry at the moment. I'd mentioned that in another video, but it's just a little bit too heavy for me personally. Um, but I'm doing it for this video so that you can see it in action. I think if you're somebody that really loves a heavy coverage concealer and that's your kind of bag, you'll probably absolutely love this. I'm not like in love with it as an under eye concealer but in other areas like around right here if I've used it that way or to use it for spot concealing it has been absolutely fine but as an under eye concealer it does get a little creased and a little crepey I think you'll be able to see that there and that's me not had it on very long at all. I'm going to take my Lara Faye spoolie and I'm just going to brush through the brows and then put some gel through them but it's just the same one I've been using from beauty pie so I'm not going to show you that because it's kind of boring. Okay so eyebrows are on. I did have every intention of this video doing one side with the Maybelline Curl Bounce mascara um, but what I might do is go and follow me over on Instagram and I will do a stories with this and a kind of through the day and how long it lasts because I didn't or I forgot actually that the Rare Beauty came with a mascara and I want to show you the Drama Bomb from Oma Beauty as well. So on this eye, I'm gonna put the Drama Bomb from Oma Beauty. I'm really sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I know I probably am. I am gonna curl both my lashes because I always would anyway. I always think it's important to tell you that I've done that because I don't want you thinking that the mascara has magically curled them. I always curl my lashes before I put any mascara on. 
Um, and I'm gonna go in with this one, as I say, from Woma, Woma, Yuma. And again, this is not a first impression. I have been using this kind of on and off since I bought it, um, or since I got it bought for me for my birthday. And I think it's quite good. I find there is not too much fall down. Like I'm not getting loads of little black spots here and there about, which is quite nice. Um, but I also find that it's, it is dramatic. It's called Drama Bomb. You can see there, it's a little fuller than the likes of ones that I've used before for a little natural look. It's definitely one that if I want impactful lashes, this is the one that I would want to use. So that is the Oma Drama Bomb. And I now will go in with this Rare Beauty one because I actually had totally forgot this was coming with a mascara. I thought it was all just face stuff and lip stuff. And this is their Universal Volumizing Mascara. Let me tell you what kind of brush it's got. So it's it's just a, a normal kind of fiber brush again. And we're gonna try that on this side. Okay, so on this side, that is the Rare Beauty one. On first impressions, I'm gonna say I don't think this is as Va va voom as the the Oma. I just don't. It took a little bit more working to actually get it into the lashes to make it look nice and even and equal with the other side. This one is just a little bit more big impact. This is very pretty though. I think this is very very pretty, but it's very much a first impression. I don't know what the fall down is like. I don't know what this is going to end up looking like. But that is. The Rare Beauty on this side and the Oma Beauty on this side. All right, so I've zoomed you back out a little bit now. Brows are on, la um, lashes are on, mascara. I have added a little faux freckle to my cheeks because I just felt like it made my skin look a little bit more skin-like. Uh, I am looking forward to spring, I have to say. So I used the Lottie London freckle tint for that. I have added a little bit more of the pinky blush on that side. But I have to be honest, I think I just prefer the colour of this. This is similar actually to Joyful, the Spectrum one that I really, really enjoy. Quite similar to that. But I really, really like the colour of this liquid one and I like the way it went on a little bit better as well. I'm going to use some of the liquid highlighter. I'm going to just pop it on the back of my hand there because I don't want to go straight onto my skin just in case. And as I said, this is definitely a little bit more rosy gold rather than a kind of silvery colour, which I like. Um, I think like the Vive one that I love is definitely more of a clear gold colour. This one is definitely a little frostier, but it is a little bit more pinky, a little kind of more pinky colour to it, which I actually really like. I'm just going to pop a little bit at the top of my cupid's bowl. So I'm now going to go in with this in the red, which I don't need to. I could just keep on the kind of BAM colour that I've already got on. But I figured if I was going to try out all of the products, then why not try the kind of matte lip that they've brought out too. And this is in the colour Inspire. Should I line my lips? Should we do that? I'll put a little bit of liner on. This is just the Kevin Aquan. Now I feel this is quite a blue toned uh, lip liner from Kevin Aquan. And this one is probably a lot more like an orangey toned red, but look at it, who cares. Oh, that's quite nice. Very, very soft, very cushiony, very in keeping with some of the Korean beauty brands that I've used before. There have been that kind of soft blurred lip almost. It is a matte lip, but it's almost I don't know how to explain it. It feels like as if it's got some sort of cushiony property to it. I don't I don't know how to describe that. I don't know, like it's obviously not fully dried down yet, but when I first put it on there, it definitely feels like it's got a lot more softness to it than a lot of other liquid lipsticks. It's very, very comfortable. I think that's really, really pretty, very nice. And in real life, I feel like on the camera it's gonna be coming off ever so slightly orange. It's not as super orangey corally as I thought it would be in real life. It's definitely a little bit softer than that. So that's quite nice for me because sometimes a really orange red isn't always, I like orange lipstick, but a really orange red isn't always the one I go for. I usually go for a more blue toned red, but I think that's lovely. And I think the highlighter is really, really pretty too. All right, so now that the sun has well and truly disappeared, 
and my hair has been tied back for too long because it's not sitting quite right. Uh, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I think off the top of my head, kind of first impressions, what I'm gonna say is I prefer the liquid blush over the melting blush. Uh, I knew I was getting this in a mini size. If I could have got this one in the mini and this one in the full, that's probably what I would have done. These are lovely, but I feel like I just prefer that really impactful look straight away and I felt this went on a lot easier, a lot smoother. The highlight I think is very, very pretty. The lip I think is very pretty. I also think that the lip balm is very, very nice, but I think are these 10 a penny? Can you get lip balms that are very, very similar? Of course you can, but I think it's nice. The mascara I will keep you posted on. I think it's a lot softer than other ones that I've used, and especially like that Oma Drama Bomb. It's definitely took a bit more work to get where I needed it to go, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing in a mascara. Sometimes I would rather, like the blush, I would rather that I had to build a mascara than it run away from me. Whereas a blush, I don't mind if it's there straight away. I'm quite good with that. And I think that's all the kind of new bits. Uh, I've obviously spoke about Fenty before. I have spoke about the Nabla before. is isn't a first impression. I have used that over the course of the months since November, since I picked it up. So that isn't a first impression for me. But that's today's look. It's pretty simple, pretty obvious. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of these things. Let me know what you've tried from Rare Beauty. Have you tried any of the foundations? I'm going to give this a bash as well at some point this week. Um, again, all of the information about Lara Faye and all the brushes that I've spoke about today will be down below. Any links or anything that I have to kind of codes off, money off, all that kind of pish is down below. And very explicit as to when I get a kickback and when I do not. I do not get a kickback with my code with Lara Faye. It is just a code they gave me to let anybody who watches me or follows me over on Instagram to use, but I don't get any kickback from it. But that's where I'm gonna leave it today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you are all well and getting on through February now. Let's hope the spring gets here soon. Uh, we'll say cheery bye from me and Pebbles. I can just see her licking her chops back there. And I will see you all again in the next one. Bye.